Have you ever given someone just less than 20 minutes to kick you off with two different libraries? Well, if not, then this is your chance because this is what we're going to do today. We are going to have a look at a React weather app and we are going to migrate it to React Query. And from there, we are going to migrate it to the Unglitch library. And even though some of you might have experience with React Query already, if not, this video is for you. I'm pretty sure that none of you has experience with Unglitch yet because its recent version has just been released in addition to the website. And just to give you a little feeling, the Unglitch library is kind of a mixture of React Query and Zustand. Yeah, so that's about it. Let's get started. So we have this really cool weather app here, which actually fetches live data via Open Meteo API and shows currently some stuff from New York and also has a special wind speed section, which shows wind speed in New York as well as wind speed in Berlin. And what you sometimes can see in the upper right corner of those cards is the loading spinner when it updates the data. Currently, this is not yet using React Query or Unglitch. So it's pure React. Let me show you. So on the left side, there are the statically coded weather component cards. And the magic happens in the weather component itself, which currently only supports Berlin and New York. So let's jump right into it. There's two states. One is the is loading state, which shows the loading indicator. And you might wonder why it's a number and not a Boolean. Well, the simple reason is that Potentially, which is bad, but potentially it could be multiple requests running. A number just to be on the safe side here. And now the second state is the weather data state. And for a given city, it will always, when not null, have temperature, wind speed and humidity. Even if you're only showing temperature, because that is what the API returns. And then we are using use effect with an empty array to make sure that this here is being ran when the component is initialized. And that means we call refresh weather in the very beginning and we also call refresh weather every five seconds. And refresh weather is simply this function which counts up the is loading and then uses the API and sets the weather data. And when it's done, it counts down the is loading again. That's it. The only missing part is then rendering all of this. Now all of this works, but it isn't at all efficient code because all of the components are independently fetching data every five seconds, even if it's the same city or even if it's the same city with the same data being requested, which is the case for all of the first four. So if you are using that API request weather from API for a given city, then it will always return temperature, wind speed and humidity. So you don't have to do it four times only because you have four cards. But this is what happens here. So if you have a look at the inspector and then jump to the network tab, you're seeing that every time stuff gets updated, like it's five requests. And this is bad because all we would need is two requests, one for New York and one for Berlin and then share that content with the other cards. Now, obviously you could try to solve that on your own, which would make your code only more complicated and unreadable. And that is why we all love libraries that make our life easier and one of which is React Query. So let's now jump to making this a React Query version and then jump to comparing it with an Unglitch version. To get started with React Query, we need to install it first with npmi react-query. All right, now when that's installed, you just jump over to whatever your root or main component is. Even though I'm in the app directory version of Next.js, the approach I'm showing should work for both versions. The first thing you wanna do is wrap your application with the query client provider. Now the query client provider gets a parameter, which is the query client itself. And this one we have to initialize. And the universal solution to this is simply using use state. And that one gets a function to initialize the query client. And then we pass that client 
and we're good to go. Okay, so far the base setup for React Query. Now we want to jump over to the weather component. So the first thing you want to do is use query and then one gets an object and then you want to pass the query key and that query key should always be identifying what you're doing or in simple words, we are fetching the weather for a specific city. So we are passing weather and the city. So it's always unique for weather in that city. And the second thing is the query function where you tell it how to fetch data, which is an async function. And we already know how to fetch that data because we have it here. So I copy this and say return. And now since React Query just uses the result that you're returning, you can just remove this. Now watch out. We can actually get rid of all of this code with the use effect and states. Because use query actually returns an object and we'll call that object weather query. And for is loading, we can actually just use weather query is fetching. But now how to get the weather data? Well, the weather data is simply just weather query data. So the result of this one is being saved in data. Let's save that and jump over to the browser. Let's refresh the page and that works. And now you can see in the network tab that there were actually only two requests to the weather API because all of the requests for New York had the same query key, which is weather New York. So React Query knew that this is the same thing. Now the only problem left is how to refresh the data. That's easy because you simply say, well, refetch it every five seconds. And now if you wait for five seconds, it will refetch the data automatically. All right, so fetching is pretty easy with React Query, but what about actual data management? Like for example, we wanna manage which cards are being shown here. Let's jump to the page where the cards are currently being hard-coded. And now let's remove all of those and simply keep one in the comment to copy. Now let's create a new component, which we call Card Manager. And this Card Manager should always show the cards from a given array. We'll just define it in here. So cards is an array and initially it contains the city Berlin and the type wind speed. Since I'm using TypeScript, I also want a proper type. City is one of the cities supported and the type is weather request type. Only to make sure we get proper data. And then what we wanna do is we wanna show all of the cards in the array. So we iterate through this array and return the weather component with the given city and the type. And in this case, we're simply using the index as key. Okay, let's use that card manager in our page now. Perfect, it's showing the wind speed in burden. Now we need to be able to add more cards. And for this one, I already prepared a helper component, which is called add card form. And this one gets a function on add. And this function will give us the city and the type. Let's see if the form is working. New York temperature, city, New York temperature. Okay, that's working. Now managing state with React Query doesn't come intuitive in my opinion, but still, if you know how to do it, it's quite easy. We can actually define this array outside of the component. And then we use use query. We give it a query key, which is simply cards in this case. And the query function, simply returns our cards array. And the result is the card query. And now instead of cards, we're using card query data. Okay, so that still works. But what I meant with it's not intuitive is that how are you going to manipulate this data now? And in React Query, you need to use mutation functions. And you do that by saying use mutation. 
and then you provide the mutation function inside of the object. And the first parameter of that function is always the stuff that you're going to pass. So in our case, it's an object containing city and type. Also, it is an async function. And now don't be scared. We can use the existing array cards and we just push the new object. And if you want to use that function, you use that mutation fn, which we defined, and then say mutate, and we'll pass city and type. Okay, now let's see if that works. Let's choose New York, and let's get the wind speed. Click it, and we get it. Let's also have the temperature. New York works as well, and whenever the same city reappears, it's being synchronized in loading with the existing one. Now, before we jump to Unglitch, there's one last thing you have to know. Since React Query doesn't own what you mutate, but you're basically just telling React Query that you mutated something, and you're also telling React Query where to get the data from, React Query doesn't automatically refresh all of the data in the whole application when basically data is being changed in one place. I spare you the details right now, but essentially what you would have to do then is on success, provide a function, and then you would have to basically specify what to refresh in your application with query client dot invalidate queries and so on and so forth, but we're not looking into that right now. That's just like a general info. All right, so far we are query with management and data fetching. Cool. Now we want to migrate this fine working React Query version to the Unglitch version. And to do that, we first install the latest version of Unglitch and then run the server again. Now, even though Unglitch works similar to React Query, it has a different concept. And the concept behind Unglitch is that all of the cached data is part of a global shared state. And this shared state is also called store. And to manage this global shared state, we need to create a store. So I'll create a new file store.ts. And before using Unglitch, I love to sketch out how my initial state looks like. So we're going to have cards. And the initial card is going to be Berlin with wind speed. And also we're going to have weather data for each city, which is going to be an object with the city as a key. That is initially empty because initially we don't have any data. I'm using TypeScript, so I also want a proper type for this one. My state, and that's the array of proper cards, plus the weather data with the cities, mapping to weather data. And since loading cities is optional, every city is optional. Let's assign the type. And now comes the Unglitch part. To create a store in Unglitch, you simply import the create function from Unglitch. Then you pass a function, which creates the initial state. And since we already have the initial state, we'll just say the function returns the initial state. And that's already it. It will return the store. Now, to be able to use that store across your application, you want to definitely export the three functions update, use fetch data and use store, which are given back from the store. I promise that was really already the most complicated part. It's only getting easier from here. The first thing we want to migrate is the card manager and that is going to remove a lot of code. So we're going to remove this and for now we're also going to remove this one and we're also going to remove this one. And for now the only thing that you want is access to the cards in the state. And that's as simple as using use state with the only difference that you're using use store from your file. And then you're passing a function which gives you the current state and you just return state cards. And now you can use those cards. Let's see if that still works. Let's save it. Refresh. Yep, works. Super easy. Now let's make sure that adding a card also works. You don't need a hook for that. Simply import update from your store. And now we want to manipulate the existing cards array in the state. So we can pass a function that gets the current state and returns a new state. And now watch out. We are saying the cards is an array of the existing cards and the new one. And there's even an easier solution. But before we look at that one, I want to explain you what happens. 
Now, for people that already have used other state management libraries, a valid question might be, we are putting cards into the state, but we're not using weather data again. So are we throwing away weather data? And the answer is no, because on the root level of your state, Unglitch will never throw anything away. So it will always just merge in the structure. So if we're not overriding weather data, it's also not removing it. Let me show you that it works. Let's add New York, wind speed. Nice. I promised you an even easier solution. Now we're saying cards are the existing cards with the new one. Unglitch has also a one level deep merger. So instead of doing this, you can also say update merge. Then you don't even need the state that's passed because you can simply return this one and it will automatically merge it. So let's try if that still works. New York and wind speed. Yep. So if that isn't easy, I don't know what is. But we still have React Query in the weather component. And the good thing is that React Query and Unglitch have similar semantics, even though they have different concepts. So instead of weather query, we're saying weather Unglitch. And then we import use fetch data from our store. And the first thing it's getting passed is basically the function that we passed as query function. The second parameter is an object and to resemble the refetch interval we use refresh interval same thing different name also the query key is a similar concept in unglitch but it's called token and it is either a symbol or a string so we'll just use weather with the city however now we are coming to major differences the basis of unglitch is the store which we've seen in the card manager is super easy to use so all the data you want to share is going to be saved in store. And where React Query basically caches everything from the query function, this is not the case for Unglitch. Because Unglitch assumes that functions often return redundant data which you don't even need and doesn't want to blow the memory. So to get the data from here into your state, you provide an unsuccess function, which gets the update function as first value and the data from the API as second value. And obviously this is only called unsuccess, so not if an error was thrown. Since in our case, the API returns all of the proper data, we just want to use update. And now we want to use merge again. And the thing we want to merge is the weather data object. And we want to provide the city weather data, which is coming from the API. So that was the first major difference and there's a second major difference. Unglitch also does not assume that this is the exact data you want. Often you want to fetch and process data, but return only a portion of that data. So you are telling Unglitch which data you want. And this is easy. You just say data from the state and give me the weather data of that city. And that's really it. Now you can get rid of weather query and we replace these two with weather unglitch and we don't even have to adapt the properties because they're the same. Now let's save it. Let's refresh the page and let's add Berlin temperature and New York wind speed. Nice, working fine. And that's really all it is. So that's it for this video. There's more to tell about Unglitch, but maybe we'll cover that in another video. And now one more thing I didn't want to spoil in the beginning is that I actually started developing Unglitch last year, I think around about a year ago, when React published the official store sync API. And I liked the idea of Zustand but I didn't like the idea of not having something that also manages fetching data. And at that point of time, I didn't know React Query and developed this thing and found it to be very similar in a sense of being a mix of both worlds. And that's cool. If you like it, try it out. Give me your feedback or contribute on GitHub. And now enjoy the week, friends. Enjoy the summer and see you next time.